Hello, friends. This is Film Focus speaking. Today, I'm going to share with you a narrative about the comedic motion picture from 2021 known as Queen Pins. Set in the suburbs of Phoenix, Arizona, the film follows a domestic homemaker named Connie who finds herself arrested in her home in the middle of the night. She gives up without a fight and remembers how it all started a few months ago. Connie is a former three-time champion walker. She currently lives with her husband Rick, a CPA, and Ears, with whom she has a very strained relationship. Since they had no children, they spent a lot of money on treatment. But unfortunately, when Connie finally got pregnant, she lost the baby. Rick is away for three weeks every month. When he's home, he treats Connie poorly, constantly reminding her that they lost money because she wanted to have multiple treatments and berating her for spending too much money on her coupon obsession. That bit of obsession is real. Connie hoards coupons and then buys things in bulk. Hide everything in the nursery to cover the walls and forget your loss. Connie has a neighbor, Jojo, who has a YouTube channel about saving money. She's also obsessed with coupons. She lives with her mother, Josie, and cannot find a job. In her spare time, she flirts with the mailman, Earl, and sells cosmetics door-to-door, -door, which doesn't go well. Whenever Coney goes to the supermarket, she gives the cashier, Greg, a dozen shopping coupons. This saves her hundreds of dollars. One afternoon, while putting groceries on the shelves, she gets upset when she sees baby wallpaper among the boxes. She decides to eat a bunch of cereal as if it will cure her depression. Connie noticed that her breakfast cereal was not as crunchy as usual. She sent an email to the cereal producer expressing her dissatisfaction. Shortly after, she received a letter of apology and a voucher for complimentary cereal, which made her happy. When she goes to the market to exchange the coupon, the Greek tells her that she is not special. All companies send free coupons to people who complain. This inspires Kony to send emails to different manufacturers, even if the products are fine, which earns her a huge pile of coupons for free stuff. Connie presents the coupons to Jojo. Jojo is astonished by the tactic and even tries to purchase the coupon from Connie. Jojo's proposal leads Connie to the epiphany that she could sell the items she obtained at no cost for pure profit, a truly excellent business venture. Upon researching, Connie discovers that these coupons are produced in Mexico, not far from her own residence. This revelation sparks an idea. They could potentially swipe a significant quantity to resell. At first, Jojo is hesitant. However, due to her significant debt, she agrees to help. Ken, a loss prevention officer, was on duty at a neighborhood grocery store in Nevada when he noticed a problem with a coupon being processed by the cashier. Upon examination, he determined that the coupon was counterfeit. Despite the store manager's request to honor the coupon out of respect for the elderly woman who had been a loyal customer for many years, Ken stood firm in his decision not to accept it. This resulted in the elderly woman hurling insults at him. Connie and Jojo arrived at the coupon factory in Mexico and observed the employees finishing their shift. They sought the assistance of Alejandro and Rosie, who were experienced in this matter. The couple followed Alejandro and Rosie in their car, causing the latter to believe they were being robbed. However, after Connie and Jojo explained their intentions, they were invited into the house for a conversation. Rosa is pregnant and facing financial constraints. Connie and Jojo suggest acquiring vouchers to resell in the United States with the intention of splitting the profits. Despite Alejandro's reservations, Rosa convinces him to consider the welfare of their unborn child. The strategy they have developed is simple. An extra coupon is printed with each one, which is usually intended to be discarded. Alejandro can send the coupons to Connie and Jojo for sale. The duo receives their first box of coupons a few days later. They create a simple website to sell them. The business quickly becomes successful, but supermarkets also soon begin to notice losses. Ken receives numerous letters and phone calls from managers who complain about losing money. He conducts a thorough investigation and eventually discovers the credit card number used to make one of the many purchases with these coupons. After a few days, Ken visits the housewife who used the coupon and learns about a website that sells them. 
The website was promoted by a black woman on YouTube. When Ken returns to the office and opens the website, he finds the motto. To solve the problem, they must demonstrate their company's legitimacy. To achieve financial stability, they should save gradually. They were upset to discover that their PayPal account was blocked due to an excess of funds. To achieve financial stability, they should save gradually. They seek the help of Tina, a renowned dark web hacker, as they are unsure of what to do next. Tina scolds them for openly advertising, warning that they are making themselves vulnerable to being followed. As a result, she erases all of JoJo's video content and explains that they need a front for their business to launder their money easily. They obtain fake IDs, bank accounts, and a reserve to use, but they must wait six months before using their earnings. This way, any connection they made with their real names could fade over time. After agreeing, Tina receives 10 for her help. Tina's cleverness ensured that there were no clues left on the internet for Ken to follow. He goes to the FBI and is told they will look into it. The couple finds the coupon problem ridiculous and assigns the task to their low-level office worker, Albert. With nothing else to do, Albert takes over. Thanks to Tina's cover-up and fake IDs, coupon fraud becomes a profitable business again. Ken composes messages for the FBI every day. Six months later, the couple is ready to spend their money. However, Tina had mentioned that the items were dirty, so they decided to clean them first. Connie suggested purchasing expensive items to resell later, using the profits to launder the money. They attempted to obtain cash from multiple banks under the guise of hiring employees for their cosmetics business. Coney and Jojo went on an expensive shopping trip, purchasing sports cars, boats, private jets, and even guns. Meanwhile, Ken finally received the call he had been waiting for from the FBI. Albert informed him that he could not do anything because someone had removed all the leads. To boost sales, companies are sending discount vouchers through the mail. Ken, a business owner, asked Simon, a postal service inspector, for help. Simon suggested that Ken obtain a sample of the vouchers from the online service to examine them more closely. A few days later, when the mail arrived, Simon noticed that the package was labeled Dispatched from Kansas. However, he is actually from Arizona, as indicated by specific numbers on the online market. He travels to Arizona and agrees to bring Ken along, as he is already familiar with all the supermarkets in the area. Turning back to Coney, she schedules an appointment at a fertility clinic and brings Jojo along for support. The doctor informs her that this is her final opportunity. As a result, Coney decides to use a donor's sperm instead of her husband's. Later in the evening, Tina contacts the couple to inquire about the whereabouts of the money. Upon hearing their arguments, she becomes angry at their foolishness. They must now sell everything they bought as soon as possible. When Rick returns from his latest business trip, he notices the new TV that Coney purchased. She tells him that she got a job as a saleswoman and no longer uses coupons. This makes Rick very happy. Ken and Simon interviewed every cashier in the area to learn about coupon-obsessed customers. They found the information they needed from Greg, who provided a description of Coney and mentioned her motto about two pennies. Ken remembered the motto. The following day, they visited the local post office to inquire if any of the employees knew anything about the coupon blonde. Nobody remembers Coney. However, when people hear the word coupons, they report Earl. He was always watching JoJo's economics tips on YouTube. The couple is currently trying to sell all their belongings, but it is proving to be very difficult for them. When they go to a cafe for a drink, they meet two men from a gun club and visit their club with their guns for sale. The pair agrees to offer a significant discount if they purchase the entire collection. Ken and Simon question Earl in private, but he refuses to disclose any information. After being released, he goes to Jojo's house and leaves a message for her in an envelope disguised as dirt. Unaware of Ken and Simon's presence, they keep a close eye on the property indefinitely. Jojo returns home at night. Men recognize her as the black woman seen on YouTube. The next morning, 
Jojo is distracted by Josie's sport and doesn't notice the mail. Ken and Simon follow her to the mailbox and see Connie, who appears blonde as described by Greg. Simon gathers the other postal inspectors to start the operation. They show Greg the photo, and he confirms it. Jojo couldn't sleep that night. She checked on her mom and then went to the kitchen for a snack. It was then that she found Earl's note instructing her to leave town. Unfortunately, it was too late. Simon and his men arrived and arrested Coney, Jojo, and Josie. After their home and hiding place are searched, Jojo's face appears on TV during the arrest. Rick and Josie quickly deny any involvement and agree to cooperate with the authorities during the interrogations. Meanwhile, Jojo's attempt to prank an innocent girl is discovered through a video found on the computer. Additionally, Connie admits to her crime. Upon learning that they are facing 40 years in prison for fraud, Connie is shocked. In order to make things easier for Jojo, she agrees to take over everything. Jojo has been released on bail, and although she thinks Josie paid, it was actually Earl who is waiting for her outside with flowers. Unfortunately, Connie was not so lucky. Rick visits her only to scold her and refuses to pay her bail. Connie requested a divorce. Connie hired an expensive lawyer, which proved to be the right decision. During the trial, the lawyer convinced everyone that Connie and Jojo had simply taken advantage of a loophole, as corporations often do. The lawyer's tactics were successful, resulting in Jojo receiving a 10-day prison sentence, while Connie received an 11-month prison sentence with the possibility of parole. Simon and Ken are dissatisfied with the outcome and demand answers from the government prosecutor. The prosecutor explains that the judge spared the women because the coupon brands insisted on leniency to avoid bad press. These mega corporations consider the $80 million that this scam cost them as small change. Several days pass and everyone's life changes. Ken gradually improves his conduct. He occasionally bends the rules for long-standing customers who present counterfeit vouchers. Finally, he musters the bravery to set up an account on an online dating platform Meanwhile, Connie achieves the separation she sought. Her fertility therapies prove effective, resulting in her serving time behind bars while expectantly carrying a sizable baby bump. The authorities take most of the proceeds from the scam. Luckily, they ignore the boxes in the nursery, thinking they are just food. Jojo takes those boxes, knowing that Connie has been hiding money in them all along. Earl and Jojo then move to Montenegro to start a new scam and wait for Connie to arrive so they can work together again. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit the like button. It really helps me out. Take care of yourself.